الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته to our dear live audience guests here in the studio and to you viewers at home What has your masjid done for you recently? What has your masjid done for you on multiple levels recently? In today's discussion, inshallah ta'ala, we have a variety of guests here with different perspectives Looking at what role has the masjid played in your life? Is it a place of peaceful, tranquil thinking? Is it an active center to help you develop your Islam? Is it a place where you actually learn? Is it a place that when you go to, you actually understand what the Imam is saying? To address some of these issues and to look at the kind of context of the way the masjids have developed here in the UK, we're going to open up some questions to the audience and see what they have to say, inshallah ta'ala. So what has your masjid done for you lately, inshallah ta'ala? I'll start with the sister here on my left and then we'll go back over to you, inshallah, shortly. The short answer is nothing. Um, you need to move. <laughs> we all you need have... to move to another area. Uh, yes, uh, for which I will make that point. When I go to the bigger cities, there are some marvellous uh, masjids out there who do an awful lot for sisters so and brothers. If they've done nothing, let's get to the crux of it. Okay. What haven't they done for you? Do they... you, do you don't you have a place to pray? Uh, yes, yes, we do, but we do not have a separate door to go into. So on uh, times of Jummah or Eid, we all squish together through mm -hmm. the door, all males, females, all together going through. And I think just to put in a separate doorway cannot be a major so you don't like using issue. the same door? So, well, no... Your issue is the same door? Same door. Well, I don't think we're supposed to all be rubbing up against the men or the men rubbing against us Shoulders, as we're walking yeah. into the masjid yep. in or out. Mm -hmm. um, I also think once... Um, <laughs> when, they, you know, when they've segregated us off... Mm -hmm then the brothers shouldn't come in there. So we have a scenario here where you feel that it's not segregated enough. Uh, well, no, it's not. No, it's not. If, if, if the brothers want something from the section where the sisters mm -hmm. are praying or sitting, they just come in and get it. Right. You know, okay. a so heater, a lack of segregation. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, what, other than that, what has your master done for you, though? Nothing. They, they, they don't do anything. No. And what would you like them to do, then? Um, to uh, put another door in so that we okay. can... Okay, that would be a practical place. solution done. The door's there. Okay. The door, the door, uh, the door uh, is yes. there. Next. To, to help facilitate and open the mosque, mm -hmm. um, you know, have more local key holders so mm -hmm. that we can go in at other times and perhaps do uh, circles and study mm -hmm. and um, uh, even social get-togethers right. uh, as well. Anything to contribute from the brothers on this side on this issue of the mosque and having a, a non-segregated masjid or the issues there? Yes, Bashad, go ahead. The microphone, please. Bismillah, salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. First of all, I think we should make dua for all of our parents and grandparents who migrated to this land mm -hmm. and they set up masjid in terraced houses. Yes, yeah, be very terraced careful houses, with that yeah. term, please, yes. I'm going to pronounce that yeah. properly. Yeah, it will get, put us all in trouble. Uh, indeed. Uh, and... It is something which, if you think about what Rasulullah did upon arriving in Quba, mm. at Quba, the Hijra, yeah. al-Masjid Ussisa, ala taqwa. taqwa. Mm. That, that masjid was built upon Taqwa. And our parents and grandparents, Allah bless them all, ajma'in, they had that concern to keep Islam alive. This is the 1950s, 60s, 50s, 60s, 70s. We're 220 now. No, no. Yeah. And then the point is... Uh, no, I'll do a JFK on you. Ask yeah. not what the masjid has done for you. What have you done for your masjid? Thank you. Because to be very frank with you, it's easy to point fingers. Mm -hmm. The imam is bad. The committee is bad. But the and committees not... are bad. Most of the well, Muslim committees are bad. Well, look, it's not You have bad. people with an old mindset trying to, you know, throw their weight around because they lost, they lost control at home. And so they come and sit in the masjid and they try to dominate And, and sweeping generalizations work uh -huh. only if you've had the full uh, panoply of experience of masajid. I mean, mashallah. How many mosques do you think we have in the UK, Bashar? There are about, about 1,500 to 2,000. Okay, maybe, maybe. Let's see, about 1,500 in the recent article yep. in The Guardian, right? 1,500, 1,600, okay? From those, we have only about 3% which are purpose-built. The rest are going to be those terraced houses, correct? Yes. Yep. They are legacies of the 1950s and 60s generation, correct? Who are still dominating and running the way that they want to run it. On this issue, I agree with you to the extent that 
put it, look at it from their perspective. Yeah. These are people who are earning 5 and 10p an hour. Yeah. They built structures. You've got to be a part of the masjid to take over, be involved, and prove. Because if you're standing outside throwing stones, don't be surprised if they close the door on you and say, you're not welcome here. I'm not defending anybody making it their fiefdom, their kingdom, their baradari, their particular yeah. linguistic background or yeah. race or nationalist yeah. culture. Yeah. Masajid are built on taqwa. I'm going to ask you a very quick question. I want a quick answer from you, Bashar. What has your masjid done for you? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, where I am. Do you participate? I do participate in which any which way I can help. Yeah. The masjid, uh, if, you don't, if you want me to name it, I will name it. No, no need for names. But from where I am, that masjid, Alhamdulillah, is all Active. In, active, inclusive, are, are in, uh, and they are inviting all of the different rung, uh, colors and languages of Islam to participate in the durus, in the halakat, and so on. And it is the most recent one of one of the masjids there. There are many masjids in the town I'm living in. And by the way, many, if not most of them, are doing their bit. Okay. Thank you very much for those comments, inshallah. I'll go to this brother here, and then we'll take something from the sisters here, inshallah, about their Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wassalam ala rasulillah. Uh, last time we had a meeting in our masjid, really, and uh, we we were we had a meeting of the parents who had problems with the children, uh, for example, to tackle two things, which is the knife crime, yeah, and also uh, the gangs, uh, the boys who join gangs and drug. This is dealers. a masjid. Why are you trying to deal with social problems in a masjid? Uh, <coughs> because this is a place of al ibadah. Uh, not only it's ibadah. Masjid or a community center. It is. It is not only ibadah. Also, Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was. He used also in his masjid to solve the problems of the community, because many of our children, especially the Somali communities. Yeah, but you know, you know what the what the shabas are like, like yourself and me. When we're sitting in the masjid and children make the noise, everybody complains. They don't like it. I'll, 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 I'll take them out. Take them out. I mean, that, that's what happens really in some masjids, but not all. All the masjids. Some of them they are really uh, welcoming the young children and uh, respecting them before they were doing like that but now maybe many many, many of them they have progression yes they have changed many things really and uh, the knife crime is a big problem in london and you know that our in somali community only Particularly. the number of p children who were been stabbed to death in or, or shot in uh, by gun hmm. were really uh, uh, in 2017 2018 2019 and, and we, we were trying how to tackle these problems. Is we, your masjid still tackling these problems? We, we made a committee really yeah. and they are following there and mm -hmm. uh, always we are having a meeting, we listen from them. Mm -hmm. We made a website also to, to know what's, what's causing this. Yeah, probably, they yeah. go and see the, the places where they sell the drugs and like that. And we are trying now how to tackle this problem because it's really painful when we see always young boys, 17, 18, yeah. 16 okay. years old. So the boys are looked after, the life crime address what about sisters well, what do they do for sisters your masjid uh, the, the sisters also they have their own halaqa and uh, meetings and sometimes only also for somali speaking they, sisters uh, not only the somalis oh. these days because uh, especially the girls uh, they, they don't join mostly the gangs and the, the drugs and why, why especially the girls? only the boys mostly really i don't know why the boys mm. they like maybe <laughs> they want to spend a lot of money so mm. they, they are easy for those gangs who want to join them yes but the girls alhamdulillah that uh, some of them yes they the girls maybe they like night clubs and uh, and other places but when we see them also in the masjids we advise and we we, mm. we ask them to come for halaqa to listen to the ulama and like that and your masjid you feel your masjid is doing a good job correct uh yes really okay. we we are exactly. trying our best but we we will still do better develop that, further and deal with the challenge that you face i'm gonna go to one of the sisters here inshallah and sister has a comment here then i'm gonna come to you at the back inshallah then i want to get <coughs> imam shakil Berg involved here shortly in a few minutes yeah um i've had uh different experiences so prior to having children going to the masjid you're very free mashallah you're allowed in all the rooms so you want it to be a crash no, I don't want it to be a question. Okay. No. So I want to learn at the same time, but I don't okay. want it to be a stigma mm -hmm. when there is a child in the masjid. I've had many a confrontation with aunties, subhanAllah, where it may be Jum'ah. Have you been thrown out? Uh, I've left because okay. I've just felt unwelcome in a certain that, To that extent? Yeah, yeah subhanAllah. Mm -hmm. I took my child and I left and it was another sister's child as well. They saw each other, they got excited. Yeah. SubhanAllah, and no one could hear the, the khatib and what was happening. So, And I said to the auntie, SubhanAllah, Mashallah, what are we going to do with the children? We want the children yeah. in the masjid. We want them to grow and hear and hear what's happening. Mm -hmm. and there's this stigma. Even in a masjid I used to attend mm -hmm. for lessons, they had, mashallah, their own room, mothers and babies' room. Mm -hmm. And we kept it well. We maintained it, mashallah. And then after a while, 
it just it just turned into a nightmare. They had madrasa there as also then it's it was bad management. Yeah, subhanallah. It was it was just filthy. And then because of that, they closed it. Right. They closed the room. So now we're left in the main room. Yep. Subhanallah, and people are looking down on us, you know, mothers and babies, why right. what are you doing here? So what you have a management problem attention? here on how to deal with the children. Yeah, it, Has it affected your ibadah? I mean it's affected me attending. Subhanallah. Yeah. Not my ibadah personally. Yeah. There's a time well, and a place. Sure, surely going there's to the masjid a, doesn't, have, no, doesn't, no, doesn't no. It have a role to increase course, your ibadah. For me, it was mostly attend durus and stuff. Mm. Uh, and I tried to bring my children into that into that yeah. environment. But it's just made it it's just made it less less me wanting to attend because of the stigma and having to always explain my stuff. Alhamdulillah, my children, mashallah, they will be. So what has your masjid done good for you then? Let's my local okay. masjid, without mentioning it, not much. And wallahi, I've actually... They're like the sister behind you. I've actually sat down and said to myself, I want to get up and go to the imam and speak to the imam. And why haven't you? Sheikh. And why haven't what? you? No, What's I haven't. I just haven't made the plan to go right. the, the okay. day and the time. Yeah. Just to ask, mashallah, there are lots of yeah. Muslim sisters in Do my... Do you have access to the imam? Would you be able to do that? I believe so. I know okay. where the masjid is. I can ask for the imam and yeah. bismillah. Do you think ask. what you say could have an impact? I would hope so. Or you think it fall on deaf ears? I would make sure it would not. She's nodding her head at the back. She didn't, she, it's a lost cause. For, yeah. for, seven years, sorry. Yeah. for seven years as a Muslim, I've asked the sisters, why is mm. this so? Why haven't they done this? And they say, just like you've been saying, they go to the imam. Mm. He's not interested. He runs it how he runs it. That's right, okay. I'm going to involve him, um, the brother there. Um, Lewis, your masjid. I think we can mention your masjid because they'll either put your face two and two together somewhere, somewhere. So go ahead. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. A um, few points. My head is quite spinning. In yes, because we, we, we've got an array of issues going. Yes. Topics. Yeah. And I would say I agree with a lot that is being said and I disagree as well. Let's start with what you disagree with. Um, well, firstly, look, in terms of agreeing with somewhat with what Basharat mentioned, yeah. in terms of if you look at the Prophet's Masjid as an example, yeah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Messenger of Allah is there, the Sahaba are there. Yeah. Everybody is contributing. Yeah. And there's a famous saying in Arabic, it's not hadith, Kama takunu alaykum. The way you are, that's the leadership you will get. Uh, so the sister mentioned some good points. and Masjid should be welcoming to sisters, to kids. You know, look at the prophetic model. But the Prophet's Masjid, how was it? Mm -hmm. The fancy carpets that we have? No. The, the, you know, the covering that we have? No. It was a simple... So you don't, you don't like a purpose-built masjid? No, that's not the point. The point is, the people that were there, mm. it's not the building, it's not the cleanliness itself. Mm -hmm. It's... Oh, come on, you tra you've people. traveled to the Middle East, I'm sure some of the most beautiful, clean buildings in the world you've seen, whether it's the UAE, whether it's yeah, Saudi, or whether it's Qatar. Yeah. Yes, huh? meaning... If it needs to be a center point for the Muslim community and others, mm. the people inside themselves, whether they have fancy walls or not, is, is the your masjid a center point for the community? Look, mm. I would say there is no masjid which is excellent like this. Every masjid should be striving for yeah. the role. Let's, no, I want to talk about your masjid. Let's talk about your masjid. I mean, do you feel it's a central point for your community? Is it just that you know you, you made the comment that you will get the type of leadership that you the type of people is it that Lewisham just happens to have muttaqis and pious people hence they have a nice active masjid? What is about piety? Yeah, it's just about being human beings mm -hmm. and being open-minded yep. and being welcoming. So right. when a Muslim comes in or a non-Muslim comes in or a child comes in or a woman comes in, yep. how do you treat that person? The way you want to be treated, you treat that person in the masjid in the same way. And I think, you know, many masajid now would be observing that. Okay, inshallah ta'ala. And any comment from that side over there? I'm going to go to the brother there at the back. Got just, just, just on um, that point in regards to the brother who's had a bad experience in his well, local You're the one area. who came for itikaf, right? You happened to stay, had a nice camping trip and your heart changed, right? Yeah, no, you're alhamdulillah. And that, Is that an active masjid? It was, a, I would say it's an active masjid, but it can be more active. I think a lot more masjids can do more. It depends on the dynamics and the demographics in the area. Um, it's really, there needs to be a lot of research, a lot of... Um, strategy in terms of what the masjid needs to do for its community. For Come example, on, these are laborers that came over in the 1950s, 60s. They set up a masjid, they made a committee, they got a building, it's running in the same way. You're talking about strategy? That's a big word for them. It is, but you know what? It takes time. I think, yeah. unfortunately, we're in that generation where people want things done. So instantly. your generation's failed. Uh, I wouldn't you, say you so. You guys because... have failed not to take over. Or to be able, maybe they didn't let go, but you know, as we know, Arab Spring and all this kind of stuff, nobody likes to give up anything. But when you take over, maybe your generation failed to take over. So just from <coughs> my personal experience, we were able to take over one of the local masjids. Oh, so you um, Sorry? 
you, you took over like by force? Uh, I wouldn't say by force. It was because, legal. Yeah, yeah. Um, some people weren't happy with it. Yeah. To tell you the truth, we had a lot of challenges. Yeah. Legal challenges? Uh, legal challenges, personal challenges. We had instances of things being stolen, people mm -hmm. uh, attempted kidnappings. So this is, this, this is, this is a big um, ethical mismanagement issue. I mean, governing management, because it seems to be a, an underlying problem here. But yeah, continue with your point. I think yeah. my main point is after hardship comes ease. Right, mm -hmm. And what needs to be done, especially from our generation, yeah. is to get involved with your local masjid. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be easy. You might chase that imam one time. Yeah. He might actually be busy and he can't tell you about what's going on in the masjid. However, strive again and again Volunteers and again. Volunteers possibly? For does everybody want to pay? Of course, volunteer. This is the, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The amount of reward that you'll be able to gain by helping your local community is immense. And that's why I feel that sometimes our generation, mm -hmm. that if we don't, we, we get put off straight away. We decide to bad mouth the masjid and we don't get involved at all and like i said we went through a lot of grief but alhamdulillah now we've been able to unite the mosque in our in my local area yep. so on a monthly basis yes. not um so wherever they're from developing us, uh, as a masjid. Yeah, yeah we're developing and we need to understand that we're good not leadership there uh we've got good leadership mm. it can be is better. your iman, see, imam seen as a leader as somebody who is an authority, as opposed to somebody who is... I guess you need to look at... Just, just there, there are a number of imams in our local area. So I'm, I'm talking in terms of a council or mosque, right. right? So you've got young imams who have just qualified, who've come out from yeah. some sort of Islamic seminary. They're turning them out in right. hundreds in the UK, yeah, they're exporting yeah. them. I mean, but then again, they, there's that North. concept of uh, engagement and development for them to understand what's actually going on in the local area. Then you've got the older imams who have seen it, been there, done it, got the t-shirt, mm. but trying to keep up with what's going on. Mm -hmm. So again, it's really difficult to say, all right, that my imam's like this, my imam's like that, this trustee's like this, this trustee's like that. It's very, very important important that we get involved and engage and, don't get and be off. patient with the system but in the, in the, with the aim to move forward correct 100 percent. thank you very much i'm gonna go over to the sister over here yes so i don't have a local mosque i don't you don't have a local mosque no i mean i don't go to one i don't okay. have like a mosque where i say why I to because i don't like going to the mosque most of the time okay um, that mosque or just any mosque no i've tried different mosques mm -hmm. but my problem usually is that because I'm, I'm a revert i remember when i first came to Islam and I wanted to obviously learn about it. I used mm -hmm. to go to different mosques to seek knowledge mm -hmm. and most of the times people are not very welcoming especially when you go to certain mosques that have a high population of certain ethnicities. Yeah. Um, for example, we've got Moroccan mosques, we've got Turkish mosques, we've got Somali mosques, whatever. You go there, they speak their language. When you go there, they you look... You feel excluded? Definitely. Yeah. Um, I remember even for my brother, I used to always drag him to Juma every Friday. I used to skip school for that and he used to go there for months on end and nobody would ever even start talking to him. So I think there's a lot of the, the, a lot of stuff that needs to be done in yeah. in regards to include inclusion yeah. for people who are new. I mean, you can tell if somebody walks in, they don't really know what they're doing. Yeah. And I've because I'm a revert, I used to go mm -hmm. to the church, yeah. um, and I remember when going to church, people used to welcome you. They used to talk to you. Um, even the priests used so to. So those 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 folks they done it. More they done it a bit. Yeah. Better when it comes to not what they're talking about, but how they convey what they're saying. Even when going to the mosque, oftentimes you can't understand what the imam is saying. Their sound system is a bit off. Um, then there's people pushing you around. Like the system in the church, generally speaking, is better organized. Yep. Um, and also because the priest kind of adapted the. But this is a Christian country, right? They've been here for you know centuries. Yeah, but we. Yeah, I mean, there's been Muslims around, old. and we're we're not stupid. Like we Perhaps, can we yeah. can see how we can improve uh, our masjids, and we should. In a sense, where we can include more people, also people who are not Muslims yet, but come to the masjid to actually learn about what this is. I'm going to go back to Imam Shakil, please. Yeah, I just want to flag up. You, I'm going to pose a question, then I'll take your comment, Imam Shakil. Is this a top-down problem? Do we just have failed leadership, or is this a bottom-up problem that we just have people who are cynical of mosques now? I'm um, just like to whinge and whine. Oh, they never change. They just keep taking money. They look at us. The place is always dirty. The shoe racks are the same for the last 20 years. You know, is, is it a bottom down whinging or is it a top down lack of leadership? Uh, personally, I think, look, it's uh, top, uh, sorry, bottom uh, upwards. Right. In terms of, you know, as I mentioned, look. So the leaderships, the mosques, the leaderships are generally Well, well it's our mindset. Because look, what yeah. the system mentions are very, very important points. Yeah. Uh, and then that, because we have a large revert community. In your particular area? In, in our particular masjid. Okay, that's a fine achievement. And the brother's yeah. point, I think, who mentioned, look, uh, you know, the, the Prophet's masjid is not all, you know, we shouldn't aspire to that. Look, ilm, that was a center point of the Prophet's masjid. Yeah. Yeah, if you really want an ilm and a masjid that is empowering, that's the Prophet's masjid. We need to go back to that role, role model uh, as a masjid. But the sister's point in terms of, you, you know, what she's facing yeah. and what Reva's face, 
going back to my initial point, mm -hmm. as a community, as an ummah, mindset needs to change. Part of that mindset From is, what to what? Let's be specific. From what to what? From a cultural what's bias. Wrong, wait, what's wrong with culture? Nothing wrong with it as long as it doesn't contradict Islam. Okay. Yes? So now the Prophet Muhammad is welcome to everyone. Mm. Sisters mentioned a point. Yes, we have masajid because we as have become Muslim sometimes. The masjid is a place for a specific ethnic community. Mm -hmm. If you're not part of the ethnic community, you're not, you're not going to feel welcome. That mindset needs to change. So any Muslim coming in, oh, any non-Muslim coming in, mm. should feel, look, I am a part of this community and I can benefit. Hand on heart, Imam Shakil, do you feel your masjid does that? Is it attainable? Can it be done? Definitely. Prevent. 9-11. Climate's changed, man. It's a hostile environment. You want to open your doors at a time when you don't know who's going to come inside and do what, you know, God forbid, a new, last, new Zealand Last done. week, yeah. last week, not this this week, yeah. last week, four shahadas in the masjid. This last night, youngster, boxer, professional boxer came in, had a discussion after yeah. Maghrib, took his shahada. Yeah. 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 So in terms of, it's just, and it's not kind of like rocket science. Yeah. It's not, we need to do too, too much. Yeah. Islam is simple, deen is simple, our akhlaq character is yeah. simple. Those characteristics of Islam and the Prophet peace upon him, if those are implemented in the masjid as people, forget leadership. And there's a point that Bashar kind of like alluded to, you know, sometimes in leadership people are scared. Yes. Because some youngsters are coming political agendas. Yeah. Ah, this masjid is this particular group or theology, we want to take over and change it. Yeah. Take that away from your mindset too. Right. We're Muslims and we want to be Muslims together with all other Muslims in the community. Um, and the great points that Imam Shakil has made. We're going to move on to Bashar next to him for some of the points that he might like to add. And then I'm going to move over to the sisters to talk a little bit about, I think one of them is at the university and the kind of experiences they have in the so-called prayer rooms. To pick up where you left off about fear, we've got to go back to first principles. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions many of the masajid in the Quran, but about who should run the masajid in Surah Tawbah, it says, إِنَّمَا يَأْمُرُ مَسَاجِدُ اللَّهِ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَأَقَامَ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتَى الزَّكَاةَ وَلَمْ يَخْشَ إِلَى اللَّهِ That's the whole committee members are like that. No, no, one second. Yeah. The point here is that when you have a, a criteria for measurement, now you can't impose it from the outside. Get involved, get take over. But with regard to the khasha of Allah, the fear, because the pressure on the masajid through the Charities Commission, through the government uh, policies strategy. such as Prevent. Now, this is deliberate. It's targeted. The objective is to secularize and marginalize masajid to become effectively secular institutions. But there are some so the mosques that the royalties have visited. You know, I mean, so what? Everybody in the masjid is equal. There is no royalty in Islam. There's no priesthood in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Prophet alayhi salatu was salam the best example which was the Khulafa Rashidin, you look at their example. When people visited Medina, they were surprised to find who Umar was. Mm. He wasn't even known. So I think the Masajid and those that are involved have to be mature, mm. have to be wise, have to strategize and present Islam in terms of protecting our identity, our Aqeedah, 100% from yeah. all alien influences, whether they're cultural, Pakistani, Bengali, Arab or British, and secular or insidious in whichever way. Yeah. And that requires people to understand this society and understand Islam and don't have ex fear except Allah as the eye of Surah Should we be opening our doors up to the massage, uh, open our doors up to the, the public to come? Why not? It's da'wah, illallah. Yes, brother. Let's pass the mic over to him and then I'm going to cover to you sisters in a minute, inshallah. Yeah. I think we also need to think about um, what the community wants and needs. So, for example, um, if you have a look at youth today, um, it's not the same as it was 20, 30 years ago. Youth today, they don't really like to come out of their houses. So if you have masjid that show us about, for example, they, some masjids, they take their kids out um, to see the countryside. Mm -hmm. We have an amazing country here. Yeah. Well, this is, this, this, this is the issue here where we have the traditional mosque scenario model and then you have the mosques that are becoming almost like community centers, correct? Yeah. And that's where you would have draw the line. Should a mosque be a community center, Imam Shakil? The gentleman behind you, you're nodding your head. Why do you nod your head? Should it be a community? Can you give him a mic, please? Thank you. Why, why, why should you? Why should it be a community centre? I mean, why don't just go to your local council? It's their job to. My understanding is blood tests, the mosque tests, should be the centre of the society. Hands. Yep. The mosque should be the centre of the society, especially in the West, mm -hmm. because we are here ethnic minority, mm. and the mosque should play the role of Darul Arkham. In my previous um, locality where I was involved with a mosque, that was a new mosque we tried to establish. And they, they put me like a hero 
mm-hmm. in the community. Yeah. But as soon as I mentioned yeah. that there should be a place for the sisters, yeah. and I am out of the scenario, and I was kicked out. So I made hijra, and to in where? my current community, yeah. the mosque is Alhamdulillah is like a proper mosque. We have all the facilities, yeah. and youth are very welcome, and there are some activities for the youth. Yeah. My own children. Even they used to go to Fajr Salah at 3.30 a.m. in summer. Mashallah. And they got prize from the Imam. Mashallah. Now there is a bondage between my children and yeah. the mosque. My little sister, six years old, she wants to go to the mosque as well. Yeah. So the mosque should be like that, attracting the Muslims. Then the knife crime and the, all the crimes, youth crime will go down. Majority of, the, majority of the mosques, I think we generally agree, are not like that, correct? Yes. So you have pockets of active masjids. But I just want to just, okay, I'll take your comment there, brother, over there, inshallah ta'ala. And then I'm going to go to the sister. Does sister have anything to, on this issue over here? I'm going to come to you in a second. Okay, inshallah. Yes, I go ahead. That's the point that I was trying to you make. You can get before. a mic and be ready. The point that I was trying to make before is exactly what the brother said. It's just about thinking about what is it that the community need and want. And the youth... Sometimes they don't want to just listen to halakas all the time. Mm-hmm. Like you're going to have prayers five times a day. That's the standard. So plan activities? Plan activities and yeah. think about how you're going to engage people. Yeah. Do you think there's been a culture of like mosques shouldn't be fun? They should be fun. They should be the most fun place in the world. Yeah. And that's, that, that's what's going to really connect people's hearts. Not just youth, but also the older generation. Some people are stuck at home and they don't have anything to do. They don't know about the communities. Mm-hmm. So having s- things like this is going to make people, come Muslims out. and non-Muslims, come out and, and really engage. And that's what we really need. Good. Sister, go ahead. Yes, your point. Assalamu alaikum. Allah. I just wanted to say, I, what the brother was, um, made the point that I think masjid should be more welcoming towards youth. Mm. Um, I'm, I've come from a background, um, I work with youth offenders. Okay. The youth offending team and these young people do need help and the sheikh had mentioned that no I think in Lewis well, what, what does the masjid give you though I mean can't you just join a youth club man join go play football man what does the masjid give you what do you feel that masjid gives you uh, that attracts the youth I mean, I mean you want to make friends man just go somewhere to the cinema man do something that was well you know I feel like it's if there you know if there is do you think there's a spiritual void in them do you think there's a gap I think young people lack the deen as well as to why they also born or non non born Muslims or both who are not they lack um, they lack deen and as it, you know I I think like it, that's probably mm-hmm. a reason as to why they you know turn to like crime mm-hmm. not poverty not in lack of opportunity not targeted by the government's certain policies not because they're not following the or towing the line that they should be doing what do you think is the main factor. I mean, it's it, it varies because I think it also comes down to like upbringing of parents as well. Because mm-hmm. we work with child, well, out with children who are mm-hmm. looked after under child protection. Mm-hmm. Even Muslim families, from a lot of them, you know, youth offenders, Somali communities, black families, Asian mm-hmm. families as yeah. well. So it, it just varies. But other than that, like I think it's brilliant that masjids, you know, they provide these facilities mm-hmm. like knife crime workshops. I was looking online on the Instagram for Lewisha Masjid. I didn't know they facilitate these activities for you. Yeah. To like, you know, attend knife crime. They even have professionals who come in yeah. to discuss, you know, the difficulties young people can, you know, they encounter. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to take that sister's comment right behind you. She's, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I and I'm going to come over to um, the brother here at the front, inshallah. I think mainly it's a lack of understanding, whether that's being a born Muslim or somebody who's a revert, not understanding your religion, why you do certain things is the biggest issue. Because if you knew why, what you were doing, why you were doing it, you would basically continue it and you will stay away from things that you believe are bad for you. Because mm-hmm. if we would tell the youth that what they're doing essentially is bad for them, not just there to punish them, like the sins, uh, sorry, the rules that we've got in our religion are there to protect us, not to punish us. So if we would convey that message in the right language to the youth, I think then obviously we could have a better impact um, on them. Do, do, do most of you prefer all of you, to, or what mom, do most of you prefer to go to khutbahs that are done in English? I just have a show of hands. Who prefers to go to khutbahs that are actually done in English or they... Yeah, and do you feel that the most of the mosques that you go to provide that facility? One, two, maybe. Yeah, some of them do, some of them don't. Okay, thank you very much for your point, sister. Jazakallah khair. Yes, brother. Yeah, go ahead. Do you have a mic with you? Make sure you have a mic, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Just then, I'm going to come to you at the front. Okay, inshallah, next. Yeah. Just uh, some quick points I want to make about um, being more inclusive. 
Talking about khutbas, I think it's also important that we need to cater for those who have disabilities or SEN needs, um, especially coming from a school teacher perspective. There's some some masajid do have sign language. For some do. Very some few. do. Yeah, some, yeah. alhamdulillah, we're very fortunate. Okay. They have sign language. Some don't. So imagine you've got someone who's, you know, uh, coming from a disability background. So making that inclusive. Second point was about the youth. I myself, we run a youth leadership program mm -hmm. for young people 14 to 18. And alhamdulillah, we invite them. We have these fun icebreakers and so forth. So I think masjids need to be that community hub for young people because a lot of young people, especially nowadays, yeah. whether we like it or not, in the next 20 years, they're the ones that are going to, inshallah, run those masjids. Yeah. Um, so we need to ensure that we cater for them. And lastly, about the sisters, it's true. A lot of more masjids, we need to be making more access for sisters to also contribute. So yeah. subhanAllah, a lot of times they're stuck at home because they don't have the facilities or the access. Mm -hmm. A lot of masjids do, but some don't. Mm -hmm. And I think we just need to work together. Like look at really good examples of masjids that are doing it mm -hmm. and then providing training. Yeah, I'm going to talk about examples of good masjids and the criteria that's, that's often used. Um, yes, you're coming at the front here, please, brother, inshallah. So I come from one of the mosques where they do have sign language. Uh, it's probably one of the better mosques in the country, uh, yeah. purpose built. Um, I think we need to really lower expectations when it comes to what we demand from our mosques. Um, we have lower expectations? No, no, no. People are asking for the bare minimum that's, that's, just to understand what the imam is saying. That's true, but, but the vast majority of the mosques, as you know, are terraced houses. Yeah. They're not purpose built. They're structurally yeah. very, very limited. Yeah, but but the, the brother next to you smashed that idea because it is about the content. It's not necessarily the building. Uh, that's true. It, it is about the content, but the structure has the limitations. And also there's a wider limitation. As yeah. we said, there's, there's, there's government um, um, intrusion into what takes place in the mosque. I'm going to stop I'm going to stop you on that. I'm going to stop you on that point just now because I do want to flag up the issue, which I'm going to pose as the next question you can think about. What, what do people think about government involvement in the masajid? Is it that only if you tow the government line, you get the money, you get the funding, you get the publicity, you get the press. And I want you to think about that because I'm going to pose that question next. But continue on that, inshallah. Okay, so I think, I think the limitation also comes from the fact that many of the mosques are charities. Mm -hmm. And there's a danger in the mosques becoming everything to everyone. Um, because uh, we are living in a secular country, we are living in very difficult times. Yeah. And I know a very famous mosque who got very involved in politics, mm -hmm. backed a, a, a candidate for MP, and that backfired. So uh, there are problems. They, in, what, like, they backfired? What, they lost funding or people no, stopped yes, going yeah, to well, Yes, yes. Um, in, to central government and locally, uh, they became too politicized. Right. And the mosques were really f fighting off each other. That's mm. what they were doing. And these are big mosques, huge mosques. So there's a risk in allowing the mosques to become center for everything. A mosque essentially is a, prayer, a place for prayer and worship. And that's the essence of the mosque. And I think we need to keep that and opening our doors to all kinds of services, all forms of activism, uh, there is a risk attached to that. And, uh, so we're all a bunch of left-wingers all going to Yes, the yes, so there, there is that as well. So I think, I think we need to lower our expectations as to what we want from our mosque. In this day and age, we talk about creating alternative spaces. We are the new generations, you know, there's so many new generations coming through, young people who, they really need to create new spaces, like mm -hmm. our, you know, uh, fathers did. They need to create new spaces, new institutions where they can have the conversations, they can have the institutions of learning. The mosque doesn't have to provide everything. So we have this image of this Prophet's mosque being central to the community. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's a nice model, an ideal model, but I don't think it's a model that can be replicated everywhere in the UK. And uh, some of that... So alternative institutes that supplement, supplement the, the work that the Masajid do, yeah. for example. Like, and you have a variety of them here, particularly in East London, inshallah, that exist. Imam Shaquille, next, inshallah, then I'm going to come to you, sister, on the end, and then to you, sister. Okay, inshallah. Make sure you have mics when I come to you, inshallah. So, yes. uh, very briefly, uh, first point in terms of the word community centre. Take the word community centre away, focus on the word masjid. And the masjid of the messenger of Allah. But does it that? Do, but it was an interesting. Sorry to interrupt you, but isn't that how some some people who may have an inferiority complex with using the word masjid and Islamic, it's all become community center these days? You know, your your geography and you're a center, that's a cultural we, center. That's right? why we need to change our mindset. Hmm. That's very crucial. Mm -hmm. So the Prophet's Masjid, I mean, with Sheikh Abdul, Abdullah, you mentioned, he mentioned about uh, youth work in, in the Masjid. And you said, mm -hmm. look, is it Ibadah? What is Ibadah? All of that constitutes ibadah. That's very, very crucial. Uh, the other point is in terms of what the brother mentioned, and all, all due respect, brother Nassim, uh, in terms of, look, again, the problem is with the mindset. 
الله تعالى تسلسل القرآن كنتم خير أمة أخرجت للناس تعمرون بالمعروف وتنهون على المنكر وتؤمنون بالله The best nation came out from mankind You command the good, you forbid the evil and you have iman in Allah mm-hmm. Muslims are no masajid, we need to be leaders mm-hmm. Government policy, if it's oppressive, it's oppressive Foreign policy, if it's oppressive, it's oppressive Masjids, imams, community, individual, Muslim individuals need to understand that I understand what Allah has given us in terms of leading others towards justice and goodness. And Masajid must do that at the center, as a center point. The impression I get, um, Imam Shakil, your Masjid is quite active. Do you share your good practice? I mean, okay, you've get, you're doing good stuff, right? Is there a sufficient mindset shift for other mosques, mosque committees, other Masajid committees to share good practice amongst yourselves? Or is there too many barriers and walls up already and whether it's from a sectarian perspective or whether from a power perspective alhamdulillah i think there's a big big change big big positive change in terms of what i've been discussing we've set up a southeast london council of mosques mm-hmm. very active mm-hmm. we share good practice with one another excellent there's a south london council of ulama and imams yeah. okay. again we share good practice so things are changing. let me flip it for i go to the sisters why don't other mosques do what you're doing Good point. I mean, uh, I think maybe... Is it because you speak English and they don't? Their imams don't speak English? Or they just came fresh off the boat and they got a five-year plan? What is the reason? Look, I, I, I think our dynamics are very different. In a sense, we have our, I would say, 60 to 70% are under 35. It's a very young In your community. Message. 20... 15 to 20% are reverts or converts to Islam. Right. Dynamics are very, it's already a vibrant. Before yeah. coming to the mosque, these are vibrant individuals in the community and so on. Right. So that replicates within the masjid and so on. That's why my initial point was, look, it's about us too. If we are kind of like have the right mindset and we want to be active, you can make the masjid that way. Right. Thank you very much for that. Yes, sister. At the um, end. I think mosques should be proactive and they should be everything to everybody. And they should open their doors for everyone. Um, not just, I mean, prayer is the fundamental thing, but then in between the prayer times, they well, should have things going on. The, the, the dangers with that, I mean, we had cases of rather well, mosques open for everybody. We have a youth club in the mosque. It becomes a drug dealing center. No, they should, the management should take control and obviously um, be on top of it all. Right. But um, it's better to send our kids instead of to a youth club yeah. to the mosque where they right. will be encouraged to pray and the underlying message will be Islam and right. that way of life rather than to any other. Do you attend your local masjid? No, because they don't have those kind of activities for... Do you, are, are your mother, do you have children yeah. or yourself? Do, do you send your child? Are they of that I age? encourage them to if, yep. they, if there are things, events yep. for them at the mosque. Right, okay. Mashallah. And I think it's a really good thing. I, th- right. I remember back in the day, people from the mosque used to come and knock on the doors to encourage people to come in. They don't do that anymore? I don't think they do, but now right. communication is a lot more easier and then... Um, the social media and everything, most can advertise events and call people in yeah, more absolutely. easily. Yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah, definitely, yeah. Coming from your sister, and I'll be going back, I want to ask, I want you guys to think about what one thing can your mosque do better? Think about what one thing can your mosque do better? And I'll ask that question quick fire across a variety of you shortly in a minute, but I'll take your comment first. The, the brother's saying about the youth and what the, the mosques can do for the youth and help the youth. Well, I personally think if you let their moms into the mosque in the first place, you can do it all together. It does include home, not just the mosque that will teach the youth maybe a better way of living their lives and making, um, you know, better choices for themselves, I think. If the mosques are only little terraced houses and haven't got space for community activities, Mm. uh, let's go to that thing called integration. Go to your local community centres. They are everywhere. They may not be Mm. mosques. They may not be Islamic. But once again, that's another place for dawah. Go in there. Help other people. Let other people in your community, which isn't, well, maybe for some of you it is, but for a lot of us is a mixed community of non-Muslims mm. and Muslims. Let's all work together to improve knife crime, etc. Not improve it. Well, yeah, address <laughs> the problem. Finish it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, you know, you make the world a better place. All doing it together. Um, which um, for any area that you live, 
there will be a mosque, there will be a community centre. You know, let's mix it up a bit. Let's let's get it become going. more vibrant, more active. The mosque, yeah. the mosque serves yeah. its purpose. We can, you know, if we can get in, we can, you know, we can do, think, do, do our do prayer. Think, do you think the mosque is a bit basically lagging behind development in this field? I mean, some of these church groups, they're, they're, they're pretty savvy. I mean, you flagged it up already, mm. not only from interpersonal skills, but from a perspective of um, their just their activities. And uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. I think I think the Muslim behind. community are. Um, are, are really quite insular, are quite naive in some um, uh, ways some to deal with people, organise things. Do you think we're, we're moving towards now in a, a kind of, we're at a stage where there's going to be a transition from the old vanguard moving on to the new people to take over potentially, or newer, younger people, which is why I think what the general brother said here at the back as well earlier on, I'll come to you in a second, was why we need people to be involved more and more, which, I, which is the impression I keep getting. Um, from from you here, inshallah ta'ala. So, yeah, I'll take your comment there, inshallah ta'ala. Yeah. No, I think to address the point that you made about what can Masajid be doing better is yeah. to reach out to their community, find the professionals, find the people who are working with youth, to find people who are working with the elderly, find people who are working with vulnerable people, and to bring them in to hold these workshops and volunteer and get involved. They need to take that approach to reach out to their community, bring those professionals in, and make use of them better. Make use of their community. The people are already there. It's just the Masajid, they're not making use of them. Okay. Sheikh Shakil, I'm going to go to you now, Charlotte. Do you have any points to add on this? I mean, from, from your experiences, um, how have other mosques taken your dynamic changes that you may have brought into your masjid? I mean, the brother's point, I wasn't saying content. I'm not saying content, but major changes have taken place. Uh, as the brother mentioned, you know, we have to ask ourselves in terms of what we can do for this mosque to become i.e. better places and imams need to be engaged management members need to engage, be engaged trustees need to be engaged sisters need to speak to their imams and speak to trustees and say look this is what we want yeah they're part of the masjid part of the community mm. and people need to be listened you know listened to so i think that's very very important for the next stage were you born here imam shakil no okay do you feel you are sufficiently accustomed to the Western lifestyle to understand the mindset of your audience? I uh, came here when I was seven. Right. So primary school was completed here in secondary, so I would say yes. So you understand society very well. Yeah. You're also an imam of a masjid, correct? Can we just move the mic across over here, inshallah? You're obviously from overseas. What challenges do you face as an imam? I mean, do you feel you understand the Western youth mindset, the, 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 the domestic problems that your community is facing, or is it that they're mostly from your community and you don't need to really understand the wider spectrum? I, I do my best really to understand uh, the, the boys and the girls who were born in this country. Even my children were born in here. Yeah. And, uh, but it's very different uh, to your own experience. And, and also I was a teacher in Islamic school and uh, I have seen many children. In England? In England, okay. here, in London here. Okay. And uh, although we have closed it now because mm -hmm. students has left us, maybe they went back to normal school because they told us it should be only home Other schooling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Home schooling and the hours we were teaching, they said that you cannot teach uh, more than three hours or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But Alhamdulillah that we teach them tarbiya and like that. Mm. Mostly what we, what I myself focus is that they should learn the tarbiyah of the Islamic culture. Mm -hmm. That's that side. But the, the, about the side of the Western way and this like that, mm -hmm. we, we ask them. They are already with us. And I have my children also. I know how, how, what they like and the and behaviors. Their experiences, and yeah. Yep. We, we, we get experience from them also. Good, Although inshallah. I'm living in here now 20 years. Maybe I became Western also now. <laughs> Maybe, inshallah. I'm going to go to the system and pose a question and I'll come to those two, um, three gentlemen in a minute. Are you, guys, are you, not guys, are you sisters doing enough? Well, I can't get in. I can't get in to do Your it. case is a pretty, 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 pretty tough one, yeah. Are sisters doing enough? I mean, you're, you're already doing social cohesion work. I mean, you're involved in a social work of helping people. Can't you get your mosque to be more, you know, active and participate in helping you? Well, I haven't really had a chance to bring it up yet, but... Mm. That is something I was thinking to bring up. Yeah. Is... Can you access your mosque? Yeah, I do. Okay. I teach in a masjid once right. a week. Okay. So um, I think it's just about yeah speaking to yeah. them and bringing it up. Okay, mashallah. But I must say, like as I said, um, I do like look up to you know the um, Lewish and masjid. They yeah. do a lot of regarding good work, yeah. supporting vulnerable people, yeah. and I think it's important um, that I, I just think that this is what masjids need to do. Yeah, to move forward. Yeah. yeah. Yes, brother in the middle. Yes. 
I just, uh, Please make sure you have a mic. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I've got I two agree. minutes left of the program, so very quickly. Very quickly. I agree with the Imam. I think uh, Masjid is only strong when the community is strong. So what I take from this show, in, and I think it's very important for us to take heed, is what are we doing for our masjids? Yeah. Like, we need to approach them. We need to say, what service can I provide? Like, recently, we've got the new SRE changes happening from September. Yeah. We're in schools, obviously, from primary schools. Like, we need to be aware of these changes and help masjids to ensure that we cater for our community um, in the best way possible. Inshallah, can you pass the mic over there? Inshallah, I take a comment from you and then to uh, to, to Imam Shakil and to Bishar. Yeah, very yes. quickly, uh, I think earlier on... Go ahead, yeah. Okay, I just take his comment first, Inshallah. Go ahead, yeah. Yeah, so um, just on that point, uh, I think it's very important to support the masjid when it comes to these red lines that is going to be affecting us directly in, in terms of our future generations. Masjids need to be clear in regards to their principles. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's one thing engaging with the community, with uh, counsellors, with uh, local leaders, but it's another to make sure that we um, make it clear in regards to what our boundaries are and why we believe um, in terms of whether it's uh, why we're against SRE, RSC, yeah. and other um, uh, topics as well, inshallah. So there should be places for you to have a uh, like a lobbying element, like a voice where you can. Uh, yeah, most definitely. Elaborate. I think the, the message is uh, should be accommodating to uh, as many things as possible. Again, it takes time. Right, it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to yeah. happen over one year. Yeah. Um, you need to understand the mission, the vision, the core values. Um, the, it's, the strategy needs to be in place, not just for what's going to be happening in the next year, but in yeah. the next five years, the next ten years. How the dynam dynam dynamics are going to change? Yeah. How much is the community yeah. going to increase? I want, I'm going to cut you there, but I want the last couple of words from Imam Shakil Beng. Sure, you got about thirty seconds, inshallah. Yeah, very quickly, uh, you yeah. asked a question about the language. Yes, and I think that's very, very important. The yeah. language of the khutbah, the language inside in our lectures, in our masajid needs to be English. Allah said, We never sent a messenger except with the language of the people. Very, very important. And also, very briefly, there is there is elements of racism within our masajid. Yeah. That needs to change. We have a lot of young Afro-Caribbean youngsters. They go to other masajid. say, look, I don't even get a salam. I give salam. The person says, how are you? Yeah. So very, very important. You know, we, we, we can't be Somali masjid, Pakistani masjid. Absolutely. We need to be masjid for Muslims. A lot of things to be said in this masjid. I'd like to thank the audience here for this very vibrant topic, a very interesting topic, very emotional topic, because the masjid is a very pivotal role throughout Islamic history. I hope, inshallah ta'ala, this has given a lot of food for thought on trying to get involved in your masjid. Speak to the imams, talk to them, put, um, um, look at good ro roles where the masjids exist. Try to encourage your masjids to follow them and get involved as much as you can. Thank you very much for watching. Inshallah, jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.